Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV, episode number 439 for Tuesday, the 16th of February, 2016. I'm Robbie. Please help me and welcome Kelsey Jensen. Hi. Nice to see you again. Nice to be back again. Tonight, we have got a lot of exciting stuff to do. Yes. And I can't wait to catch up with you because you've been away at school. Yes. We're going to hear school. about some of the things you've been up to. Yep. Great. What do we got tonight? We have a lot of stuff tonight. We are continuing our 20 Weeks of GIMP series. Nice. We've been enjoying that, haven't we, yes. folks? Very good. It's been very good. We're on week What 13. are we doing tonight? 13 already. 13. Lucky number 13. Do we get to, like, draw demons and glowing eyes? No. We're ah. fixing the rotation on a crooked image. Oh, that works, too. <laughs> hmm. We've also got the Illumi light bulb. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Illumi. Illumi. Because we are sick and tired of dumb bulbs. Yes. Incidentally, was my nickname in high school. <laughs> but we are sick and tired of the stupid ones. We want some smart bulbs. And that's where Illumi comes in. Yes. They're really nice, actually. We're going to learn all about what it means to have a smart LED light bulb. Jeff Weston in the newsroom. What's coming up? Hey, thanks so much, guys. So in case you're wondering what's going on and why I'm not in the studio doing the news, if you remember a couple episodes ago, uh, I covered the Garmin VivoFit watch to help me lose a little bit of weight, count my steps, stuff like that. One of the features of the watch is it tells me if I've been sitting for too long. And by the end of that Category 5 episode, it told me, you've been sitting for too long. So I'm doing the news from the road today. today. Uh, enjoy me uh, walking and reading to you. Hopefully I won't be out of breath. So here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Google Chrome is about to start warning that all non-encrypted websites are unsafe, and AT&T is gonna start testing their 5G network, which is gonna be between 10 and 100 times faster than LTE, and may be available for home internet service. And Russia, they're planning to ban Windows on all government PCs, and Adobe is in the news because they screwed up and deleted files from Mac users after updating Creative Cloud. Also, the UK, their government plans to introduce new measures to keep children off of porn websites. Stick around, the food full details are coming up later in the news. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Starring Sasha Dermatis. Hillary Rumble. Eric Kidd. And your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV, episode number three, three, uh, three, four, thirty-nine. <laughs> It get, I can't believe we're at 439 and yeah. it's already throwing me off. It's uh, the 16th of February, 2016. Nice to see you. My name is Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Kelsey Jensen. Nice to see you. Great to have you here and along with us for a fun ride tonight. We've got a lot to cover and I uh, love to see the chat room filling up. Yes, there's lots of people in there. You can join us online. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Category 5 on free Freenode. Sorry. Yeah. And of course, <laughs> Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Category5.tv slash TPN. Cat5.tv slash TPN. Sorry, I throw all these URLs at you. And the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, Cat5.tv slash IAIB. Wonderful. Right. Yes. What's new, buddy? Not much. I'm at university. Yeah, and, and how's I'm that going? It's going pretty good. Super fun. Yeah, I'm just finishing up midterms. Remind the viewers what you're studying? I'm studying Your majors? Social work and disability studies. Very cool. Yes, it's and long distance. Enjoying that? Yeah, actually it's been pretty good. It's a lot of fun, mm -hmm. I think. So you're, you're well away from technology as far as your studies go? Yes. Are there, are there any technologies that are interesting that are actually worked into the courses? or? Um, projectors. Mm, <laughs> unless they're nano projectors and no. they connect with Bluetooth to your cell phone. No, they're no. massive projectors. All right. You don't Old have a school. Lot of, a lot of tech Old school. Yeah. Plasma projectors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, no, but a lot of psychology courses. Mm -hmm. Which looks a lot of brain stuff and, you know, development. I feel like she's 
like psychoanalyzing me with that look. <laughs> what do you see, Kelsey? Uh, not much. I've already stumbled on my words a couple times tonight, so you know, maybe, maybe a little you know, tired, a little exhaustion. Yeah. yeah, there's a little of that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Pretty, mm-hmm. probably. Yeah. yeah, you're on reading week, so you must be yes. well rested. Yeah, we can say that. <laughs> I spent uh, the because we had a long weekend here in Canada. Uh, I know the is it all of Canada? Yeah, and, and the states too. Yes, but I think is they it call Flag it Day or President's Day? President's Day. Here it's Family Day. So yes. whatever day it is that you're celebrating, hey, here's to the long weekend. Uh, I spent my long weekend. We we were working on a brand new server for the Pixel Shadow nice. um, because it has been going so well that we had to upgrade. Wow. I had an old dual CPU, quad core, so eight cores total, yeah. uh, Xeon server that we used to use as a transcoder for tech TV. Right. And it's just been sitting there ever since we've uh, transitioned over to Vimeo. So uh, so decided to turn that into a server. And I know, you know I'm a geek when, I, for fun, while the kids are all playing the game, for fun, I was developing and coding a server. <laughs> And all the cr- all the cron job tasks and all the stuff to maintain it and generate the the wow. cool stuff on the website and you know all the back end stuff. Yeah. That's what I do for fun. That is fun. What do you do? What have you been doing for fun? Any tech stuff that is not, of interest? Or? Uh, not really. YouTube, Netflix. Yeah. You know, normal stuff. Yeah. Uh, I do a lot of reading mm-hmm. for classes and stuff. It takes up a lot of time, but I don't know. I recently updated all of my tech tech. Uh, I had to get a new phone because my old one crapped out. Your phone me. was pretty cool, though. Yeah. It had and it the, died? It died. Ah. The, the charging port crapped out on me. This is the one that took 3D photos. Yeah. That died on you yeah. just like that. That wasn't even that old. No, it was only a year old. What did you do to it? I, I charged it in weird places and weird positions. Like, I would move it and it would sit like kind of like that or like that. It was just, it wasn't good. So you got to be more gentle. I've got to be more careful with my tech. Very carefully insert the cord and lay it down, tuck it in. (laughs) Just like a little Mm. baby. Just make sure it doesn't die. So what did you end up getting? The Uh, same same thing? No, because they don't make those anymore. Oh, because that's old tech now? It's HTC, man. Um, So now I've got a Samsung. Samsung? Yeah. Yeah. And you enjoying that? Yeah, it's been pretty good so far. So there's a di- there's a difference in sort of the the tech and the um, the lock screen. So it's kind of I'm trying to get just used getting to that. used to the yeah. m- more current operating system yeah. and stuff. Android's pretty cool. Um, tonight I'm using a, an iPod Touch for our demonstration with the smart bulbs, uh, but the software is compatible uh, is available for Android as well. Mm-hmm. My phone is a BlackBerry, a Z10, yeah. which was given to me, and I'm like, sweet, that was a, an upgrade from the little thing that I had. But uh, I find it's the tough thing with BlackBerry is that there's just no apps for it. Yeah. Like these bulbs, not compatible yeah. with the BlackBerry. So sorry if you got a BlackBerry. My dad iPod Touch. That's why I'm using it. He has. He's had a BlackBerry for years for work and stuff. But, is he um, one of those that sta- vehemently stands by BlackBerry? No, because he, he just upgraded his phone. He's got an iPhone, and he loves it. Oh, okay. He won't put it mm-hmm. down. It's so funny. anything but BlackBerry. I <laughs> love it. Much. Yeah, it's not bad. I, I, it's a phone. I do. Yeah, that's it. It's a phone. Yeah. But I want my phone to be able to control smart bulbs. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Yeah, they need to get BlackBerry needs to get the the tech of Android or the operating system of Android. That'd be cool. I think that yeah. they're working toward that well, to that, try to good. redeem themselves. But whether or not that will happen, I don't yes. know. I don't know. Can we say hey to the chat room real quick? Because I see you know your messages flying by here. It's so nice to see you, Dave Maydu and Good Guy ninety eight. I saw uh, Dennis Kelly, who's been. Uh, uh, Really great help on uh, the Pixel Shadow lately, and the Pixel Shadow being the show, but also the server that you know we've got the game going on all the time. Uh, if you if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say the Pixel Shadow, check out mindtest.tv. That's M-I-N-E-T-E-S-T dot TV. We've been growing a blog there. We've been growing the yeah. whole kind of uh, the the whole franchise has been booming. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, very very popular, and it's getting uh, it's growing. So. Very cool. And I guess an announcement this Sunday as well, if you haven't checked it out uh, in the blog there, uh, you'll see that, uh, that Mangle Fox 70 was in fact uh, mentioned yeah. on Dan TDM's channel, uh, uh, The Diamond Minecart. Which is pretty 
big deal yeah. if you're a 10 year old who <laughs> loves uh, Dan TDM and you know Minecraft and all that yeah. stuff so pretty big deal indeed Speaking of uh, Lena on the bat, nice to see you. Uh, Nanami UK, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to you. Um, and I, I'm not sure if I say that right, but Nanami UK, it's so nice to have you joining us. I believe for the first time in our chat room tonight, but uh, has uh, found us through the Pixel Shadow as well. Oh, cool. And uh, it's cool to have you here. So thanks yeah, for joining us. Welcome. Right now, brains of enormous mass are attempting to convert the world to LED smart bulbs. Yet the majority of these smart bulbs have us doing one thing, using them for Halloween and monthly techno parties. Oops, oops, yes. And while techno Halloween parties are certainly groovy, it begs the question, why aren't we getting more out of these bulbs with brains? The answer is simple. While these lights offer every color under the sun, the ability to harness it in a way that makes us Michelangelo's of our own home is like sending you a watercolor kit and telling you to paint the Sistine Chapel. That's why the men and women of Illumi Labs have created a smart bulb that doesn't require an interior lighting degree. They know we shouldn't have to worry about our smart bulbs. Our smart bulbs should worry about us. When we're feeling down, they should make us feel well. We call that wellness lighting. And when you're on vacation, they make it look like your home. We call that vacation mode. Catchy, I know. And whether you're getting home for the evening, have an armful of groceries, snuggling in to watch that entire series for the third time, need a nightlight monster detector, or having that annual Halloween techno party, these bulbs of wonder will be there when they're needed most. Jam-packed with brand new experiences. A killer new app. No, not that kind of app. A sexy new body. At a price we here at the lab call a square deal. So, if you're looking for the simplest, smartest, and brightest smart bulb in the world, think Illumi. Because Illumi is thinking of you. Illumi. Better lighting for better living. Should we get into, uh, speaking of, you know, hey, what's cool tech? Should we get into it? Yeah. And then uh, we'll circle back and we'll talk about uh, teeny drones and all that yeah. stuff in a couple minutes' time. I mentioned it off the top of the show, but hey, dumb bulbs are... Out. So out. They're so yesterday. What are you going to do with a dumb bulb? I mean, you got to change the thing once every six months, you know, sometimes more frequently than that. If you use it a lot. Oh, they, yeah, well, and you do. You yeah. do. Um, and they just don't do anything. We are looking at the Illumi smart bulbs, and these things are fantastic. You can enhance your mood, transform your space with incredible colorizations and being able to f uh, change the uh, frequency of the, the light, uh, which, you know, if you know anything about light, there are different frequencies that will affect your mood, that'll affect your, your health, your sleep, um, your ability to concentrate, and by tapping into those different frequencies of light, and it's not some kind of voodoo or witchcraft, this is real stuff, sunlight. Thing, yeah. Right. In the five to six. Well, I guess about fifty five hundred to sixty five hundred K um, is uplifting and it and it boosts your your um, it kind of boosts you so that you can get things done. Yeah. And if it's a dull, dreary day, you feel kind of relaxed and mellow. And that's great for rest or reading yeah. and stuff like that. So the different temperatures of light do affect your mood. Now, these lights that we're looking at, these are Illumis. Uh, we've got um, tonight two different models. This one I'm holding in my hand is the A19. You've got, got the, the BR30. I'm going to show you the difference between these two. Uh, but these are pretty incredible. Now, the A19 you see on the lamp behind Can I me. Open this up? Yeah, yeah, please do. Um, so the A19 is just a standard looking light bulb. It looks pretty normal. This one's a little bit different though. It's a floodlight. Ooh. So let's take a look at the specs real quick. Okay, so this one, and yours may be a little bit different. Let's, let's compare specs. So for my A19, um, this one is between. Now it's all controllable. So you watch, we're gonna show you how this is done. Uh, you can dim it through a uh, mobile app. Uh, 2,000 to 8,000 K I in bright one. white. So same? same? Yep. Beautiful. So you're talking below uh, a nice mellow tone of white all the way up to uh, like uh, vibrant like sunlight. Yeah. Beautiful daytime sunlight. Um, vibrant colors. It has, uh, it goes between 82 to 93 color render rendering uh, index. And 
here's what's cool about these. I, you, I said that they're smart bulbs. Okay, yes. so we assume that through our app we can turn them on and off and things like that. They take it a step further, and these bulbs actually create their own mesh network. Right. So using Bluetooth, all you have to do is screw in the bulb, turn it on, mm-hmm. go to another lamp in the house, screw it in, and turn it on, and now those two bulbs are in communication with one another. That's cool. Through Bluetooth. That's really cool. Yeah. So no setup, no Wi-Fi, huh. no configuration. They are already com- they're ready to communicate. The only thing that you need to have is the app on your mobile device. So that's iPhone uh, or iOS, I should say, because I'm using an iPod Touch uh, for an example. So it doesn't yeah. have to be a phone, but um, as long as it's compatible Android or iOS. So let's fire up the app. Can can we? I've got it right here. Um, there it is right there. So it's just available in your app store, uh, Google Play. And you'll see that it's just a blank screen when I first fire it up. And here's the cool thing. All right, we're going to walk you through how these smart bulbs, how easy they are to configure. Right. You see that I, there's nothing to it. It's just a blank screen. By clicking on this menu over here, I'm going to click Add Illumi. So it's going to look through my Bluetooth mesh network that it has yeah. created and say, okay, do you have any of these bulbs? So I click that, and now watch what happens here. On my screen, I've got this little shimmering blue icon, and that particular bulb has instantly turned blue. Yeah. So if I had three of them, it would show one is red, one is green, one is blue, or whatever yeah. they may be. And then I can choose by clicking on it. So drag Illumi to a group below. So let's drag this one. I'm just going to use my finger and drag it. Now see, I'm holding it, and it's actually started, as it started flashing so that I know that that's the one that I'm working on right now. So drag that down to new group, and let's give this one a name. It's defaulted to living room. We can call this whatever we like. Say it's the hallway. So there we go. So now this light bulb is called, uh, or this group, so we can have more than one Illumi light bulb connected together on the mesh network. This group is now called hallway, so now I can have multiple bulbs in that hallway or whatever yeah. it is that I want to do. Okay, so now I can go back here and now I see hallway as one of my options. And if I click on this little white icon here, I can change the color spectrum right. of that light bulb. Huh. Ready for it? Yeah, let's, let's go with uh, let's go with yellow. There we go. Let's go with like a this kind of purplish color. There we are. Uh, and scroll through there, I guess you can. Oh, maybe not. Oh, there we go. Yep. Red. It's the red light special, folks. <laughs> right there. So what I'm actually doing is not just changing the color of a light bulb like it's this cool, fun little thing to do, but uh, it's, it's nice, for example, during the day uh, when I first wake up, I want to put on this really nice, bright, sunlight-like bulb. So you wake up. Yeah. But then I bring up my phone and I say, okay, it's 10 o'clock at night. I want to read for a little bit. So let's change that to a nice soft blue and dim it by just simply dragging this slider here. And I can actually dim that down. So it's a really soft or maybe I like a a soft yellow or a purple um, late at night. And then come morning, I can drag that up and brighten up the room again, just like that. So that's one thing. The next step is being able to actually program this. And you'll notice one of the things about this is that I'm not having to understand lighting whatsoever. Yeah. I don't have to know what does 3600K versus 8000K mean. I just know I want a bright white light. And it's as simple as touching there. If, I, if the color's not in the table there, I can click on the spectrum here. And look at this. I can actually move this icon anywhere around here. And it's given me a little bit of a tutorial because it's the first time I've run it. Yeah. Uh, but from then on, oh, or you can, OK, yep, tutorial, are you done? OK, there we go. So now I can actually drag around this kind of spectrograph and change the color and the hue of that light bulb just by dragging my finger. So. You can get that perfect ambient feel in any kind of atmosphere and then brighten it up or tone it down a little bit with the brightness slider, whatever you want to do. Okay, so say we're happy there. I can actually add that color and now it's saved to my preferences. So I can always bring that up in future. Okay, so let's jump over. Let's try green. There we go. So let's go back to our menu here. Okay. 
and let's look at experiences because we've now created our group and keep in mind I could have multiple bulbs so if we wanted to plug this one in yep. it would then begin communicating with that. this bulb and this yep. app so if I add it to hallway I can turn off all the lights in the hallway by simply going whoop and it's off huh. all of them so any of them that are in that group are now off or I can just turn off one bulb I believe there is a way There. So if I had multiple bulbs, I could turn on and off just that one bulb. Hallway number one is what it's called. Hallway number one, what does that mean? Hold in, and then we can go desk lamp. So that I know, nice and simply, what is that light bulb in the hallway. That's right. the one that's on the desk. And I can have a ceiling fixture, and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's as, as easy as it is to, uh, to turn on and off the light bulb. is just like a light switch. <laughs> there you go. So jumping back to our menu, back at experiences, I said I wanted to take a look at that. Look at this. We've got some experiences that take the smart bulb to the next level. Rise and shine. For example, schedule a sunrise to wake you at 6 a.m. So instead of that meh, 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 we can actually go, okay, what Illumi do we want? Now, of course, we're going to have a group called Bedroom or something like that. Yeah. We'll have two, one on either side of the bed, and, and let's set them up to give us a nice sunrise. At what time? Set your time. It's the best alarm ever. Uh, what days do you want to do it? Pretty basic as far as, yeah. you know, what do we want to do? Okay, so Barcelona. Let's try Barcelona. And you'll see behind me that the, the light bulb is actually demonstrating this for me. Denver. And I don't know how much you can tell is happening there. Uh, maybe it's not. Oh, there's a preview button. My, my mistake. Down here at the bottom, you see a preview button. So I'm going to do that on Barcelona. So here we go. So you see how it's got that orange kind of yeah. sunlight bulb? Starting to and it's starting up. to brighten up, yeah. brighten up. So imagine waking up to that instead oh, of that'd be cool. beep, 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 beep. So that's just a preview. That's just to show me. So once I've set that to the, the type of sunrise that I'd like, maybe you want something that's more, um, I don't know, more tropical. Fiji. Fiji. Ooh. What does that do? It's a bit more of a... Oh, it's got a bit of blue and purple hues. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and, then it, and, then, and then the sun supernova. <laughs> that, again, is the preview. Uh, so then we can set the duration of that sunrise. So how long do we want that sunrise to take? So from the yeah. moment it starts to come up, if you yeah. will, um, it, you know, to the point where it's at its brightest, which is, you know, you're definitely going to be awake by then. No sound. It's just such a, such a pleasant way to wake up, honestly. Yeah. So that's, that's our rise and shine experience. I just want to go through a couple of these. Uh, music sync. You can actually sync to your music library. So as you play music over Bluetooth from your device, uh, it will actually uh, syncopate to the beat. Oh, so cool. lighting will actually, so if you're having a party and you're using your iPhone or your Android device to provide the music, you've got a little bit of a lighting effect as well because you've got these lights all over the place. Vacation mode is pretty self-explanatory. This means if you leave the house for a couple of days, you can set it to vacation mode and it will automatically choose on a random schedule to turn on and off certain lights. Yeah. But it will, it will figure out, you know, okay, well, these are groups and stuff, so it will turn on the lights in the right group, and it, it will simulate somebody being home, which is pretty neat. Yeah. Uh, scene schedulers will allow you to set um, certain colors and tones. So you remember when I created a different color there? I could save that as a scene, and I can say, hey, that's what I like to read to. So yeah. I could call it reading, and then I could create a scene scheduler that says, okay, from... Uh, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. I'm always reading, so that's the scene that I want to automatically happen on the bedside ta uh, tables, right. right? So then it will have that for me. Circadian rhythm uh, will help to create a lighting atmosphere that helps to keep your circadian rhythm, that's a tongue twister, <laughs> kind of in sync, right? Yeah. A couple more cool things. Torch. Torch. This is cool. Torch will actually follow you wherever you go. Oh, that's cool. So if I enter the bathroom, the light will turn on. Yeah. To my preference. 
So the color that I like, obviously, bright orange. <laughs> Sorry, I know you're kind of cut it's off okay. on the screen there. Uh, so if I, um, if I walk down the hallway and I've got all those lam lamps um, in the ceiling, I don't have a big, long hallway. Yeah. But if you happen to live in a castle <laughs> where you have a big, long hallway, put an Illumi at every step, and it will actually follow you, illuminating your path. Huh. And as you walk away from a light bulb, it will dim down to nothing. Huh. So that's kind of neat as well. It reminds me of um, The Sims. Yeah. In The Sims, if you walk, if you can, you could set your lights to like auto light, and if you walk, if you walk, if your sim walks into a certain room, all the lights in that room will turn off, and as soon as you walk out, they'll all turn off. It makes sense. Yeah. But this is way better than motion detection. This yeah. says, hey, yeah, you're in the room, lights on. Yeah. You don't have to every five seconds go. <laughs> You know, turn back on because it turns off every five seconds. No, it doesn't work that way. It uses a connection to your phone. Uh, okay, so Torch is cool. I like that. Uh, and then the final two, we've got Simon, which is just a fun little thing. Of course, Simon being that game that you yeah, can Simon play. That, uh, no, not Simon Says. Simon, those, see that thing on the screen? Yeah. Okay, so what's it going to do? Watch the lamp. I think it said red. Did it go red? Yeah. Red. Yes, we did it. Red. red. Blue. <laughs> blue. Okay. Red, blue. We're obviously on easy. Red, blue. I really was hoping for red, green. <laughs> so that's, that's just a fun little thing. So you can actually play Simon, and if you have multiple lights, it will use multiple lights as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and then the final option that's currently there. Now, there's a new version of the app that is coming out. I understand. Um, that's pretty exciting because this is, uh, the introductory app is fantastic. It's free, uh, and uh, you just install it on any of your devices that are supported. Shake allows you to control your light just by simply shaking your phone. Yeah. So if you want to turn on and off your, phone, uh, your light, just shake your phone. And other things can be programmed in as well. So that's the basics of this. I mentioned scenes and being able to uh, change your scene based on um, just a, a, a click or a program so I can create yeah. scenes. Um, these scenes were created on uh, my home network, and that's why it's not showing um, the, this light because it's a different yeah. network. So, so that's kind of cool, too. So that's it. That's, uh, that's really all that there is to it. Any other really cool facts about Illumi? You can get them on Amazon. Uh, I'll just mention that. If you want to go through our links, here's what you do. Bring up uh, our website, category5.tv. And through our website, because Amazon is a partner with us, you can go support us. And under support us, there is partner affiliate links. And there you'll see Amazon. Probably so you might want to take off the thing. Oh, <laughs> thanks, buddy. Ooh, I'm just so excited about it. Uh, and then Amazon.com. And then what we do is search for, and I'm, I want to type this for you because it only has one L, and you might be tempted to type two, Illumi, just like that. And that's going to give you those bulbs. So this, this, these are the two that we're looking at here. Now they're a little expensive. Do you think so? Yeah, like the A19 is about... Fifty dollars for one bulb. Right, that's the incandescent yeah. style one here that will replace. Remember, you just screw that in to any of your lighting fixtures, and it's going to work. Not to sound like an infomercial, but think about this: these last up to twenty years. Well, that's pretty good. So you don't only get the benefits of the smart stuff that I'm showing you, but also um, probably in the end, you, you in the basically long run, never have to change your light bulb. Yeah, and in the long run, you're probably saving money. You are saving a killing. Think about the cost of running a light bulb. These ones, uh, the A19 you mentioned as being expensive. Well, okay, it's going to last 20 years. Um, I think it uses the equivalent of like a 10 watt bulb. If you were yeah. to, it's something like that. Like it's it's ridiculously. 800 lumens at a category best efficiency of 10 watts of power. 800 lumens using about 10 watts of power. Yeah. That's amazing. The bigger one, the uh, the floodlight, is uh, great for those overhead lights that I have in the basement. Yeah. Um, they will not work on dimmers, of course, because the app works as your dimmer. Okay. Yeah. So keep that in mind. You need to change your light switches if they are uh, if they're dimmers. Uh, 1,100 lumens, 15 watts of power. Yeah. So when you think about that, and you've got 60 watts or 100 watt bulbs throughout your house. These are going to save a lot of money as yeah. far as your hydro bill goes to your electricity bill, I yeah. should say. <laughs> we're, we're in Canada. For some reason, we use water terms. Um, but uh, so when I look at that and think about I'm never going to have to change a light bulb again. Yeah. And I get all these extra features. 
and by support by clicking on the link through the uh, Category 5 site to get to Amazon, Surprise. you're actually supporting Category 5 Technology TV, which is awesome. Um, and it's super cool. And it just yeah. works. That was so easy. You yeah, saw me. No. I, I added it. And it and it just worked. That's the advantage to smart bulbs. Yeah. At no, least the Illumi nice. ones. They're really nice quality, too. You yeah. can tell just by feeling them. Yeah. They, they, they seriously are. That's not even just a pitch. Yeah, no, they're nice. <laughs> they're really good. Uh, so check these out. Again, uh, try to find them on Amazon if you can using our uh, affiliate links. We appreciate that because it helps to support the show. They're also available at Fry's, Home Depot, and, of course, their website, illumi.co. The price for the, uh, for the smaller one, the A19, is $59.99, and the, uh, the BR30 is uh, $69.99. Yeah. And they're fantastic. Very, very pleased with those. Yes. So check them out. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, we are going to jump right over to Jeff Weston, who is standing by in the freezing cold. Jeff. Hey, man. It's Tuesday, February 16th, 2016. And here are the stories we're covering this week. Google Chrome is about to start warning that all non-encrypted websites are unsafe. And AT&T is beginning tests for a 5G implementation, offering extremely, extremely fast wireless internet at gigabits per second. Whew, that fast. Russia plans to ban Windows on government PCs, and Adobe, they screwed up and deleted files from users' Macs when they updated the Creative Cloud. And lastly, the UK government plans to introduce measures to keep children off porn sites and they could be forcing all users to register with their credit cards to verify their age. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. You've got mad skills. Now hone them. Learn new skills or improve your existing ones with online video tutorials and training from lynda.com through our special link at cat5.tv slash lynda. Learn software, technology, creative, and business skills you can use today to help you achieve your professional goals. Join today and start learning. We'll give you this chance to try it absolutely free with unlimited access to all of the courses. Sign up now for free, cat5.tv slash Linda. Hey, I'm Jeff Wesson. If you're just joining us and you're wondering why am I not in the studio, if you remember watching the Category 5 episode a few weeks ago where we covered uh, my weight loss with the Garmin VivoFit watch, you'll know that one of the features I talked about was the fact that the watch tells me if I've been sitting for too long. Uh, by the end of that episode, I was sitting for too long. So I've decided I'm going to take the news on the street and walk. Uh, at this point, we're going to be able to find out whether I've got the lung capacity for walking and talking and reading in the cold. So um, yeah, should be fun. So here are the top stories we're covering from the Category5.tv newsroom. It was Google who finally put the nail in the coffin for Internet Explorer 6 uh, when they put their foot down as far as the dead technology. And now they're once again putting the foot of Google down. This time though, it's on non-HTTPS websites. We've seen it coming since they announced it in 2014. Uh, at that time, they announced, we, the Chrome security team, proposed that user agents gradually change their UX to display non-secure origins of affirmative non-security. What? We intend to devise and begin developing a transition plan for Chrome in 2015. The goal of this proposal was quite simply to make it clearly displayed that, to users that HTTP provides no data security. Could this be the end of the line for non-secure HTTP websites? I don't know, we'll have to find out. Google plans to lead the way and start developing browser warning messages that interrupt the flow of a visitor. Potentially, users could be driven from a site because of fear of security issues. In addition, Google and other search engines could penalize what they see as non-secure sites and drop them down in their search result pages. If, and if, Google initiates this move, the other main browser providers, such as Internet Explorer, The Edge, Apple Safari, Firefox, and others, they could be forced to follow. All is not lost, though, for those of you who run your own websites. One of the Linux Foundation's collaborative projects, Let'sEncrypt.org, is a new certificate authority, and it's free, automated, and open. It's a bit technical, of course. I mean, why wouldn't it be? We're talking about websites here. But if you're familiar with the Linux command line and basic server administration, you'll do okay. 
And if not, there's a number of growing web hosts, including our partners at Category5.tv, who already have it integrated as a free add-on. Let's Encrypt.org went public uh, beta in December. AT&T, they're testing an early version of its 5G network this year, and they're saying it's going to be one or 10 to 100 times faster than LTE and might be used for internet home service. An AT&T spokesperson uh, told Ars Technica an early use of 5G's underlying technology could be delivering broadband to homes and businesses, and it's possible that we could have limited commercial availability this year, depending on the trials. This sounds like it could fit in with the AT&T plans to provide fixed wireless internet to areas with good, without good wired broadband. AT&T's announcement on Friday said the 5G network will rely on millimeter waves, I didn't even know those existed, which are 30 gigahertz and above and require line of sight connections. 5G will also likely use the spectrum below 1G to connect to areas that can't be covered by the extremely high frequencies. With speeds up to 100 times faster uh, than today's average 4G LTE connections, customers will see speeds measured in gigabits per second, not megabits. Latency will also be lowered to about one to five milliseconds, the company said. Verizon's also planning 5G trials this year. Faster internet, like for streaming, gaming. I love it, it's exciting. I want to see it happen. Okay, somebody who doesn't want to see things happen is the Russian government. Why? Well, as I fix my earphone, I'm just going to let you know. They're famous for not being so open to foreign technologies. And now they want to take it a step further as the government allegedly plans to ban Windows from government computers. In addition, German Klamenko, Putin's new number one advisor for internet and technology, who was appointed six weeks ago for you political junkies that weren't in the know, uh, he stated that a new campaign which is looking to increase taxes that American tech companies like Google, Microsoft, and Apple would have to pay. Companies would have to pay up to, get this, 18% more in taxes if this campaign is accepted by the Russian government. Now, reportedly, the purpose of this campaign is to support local companies like Yandex and Mail.ru to be better accepted by the Russian people. The most radical change being proposed in replacing Windows on government PCs with a Linux-based operating system developed by Russia. Klamenko also stated that there are already 22,000 22, municipal authorities ready to replace Windows with their own operating system. While the government prepares for the big move, Windows is still the dominant operating system on people's computers, as 93% of desktop computers in the country still run Microsoft's operating system. So, we'll see if the Russian government will even try to convince people to switch to another operating system or if it's gonna stop at maybe its own PCs. Okay, Adobe. They have patched its Creative Cloud apps that people noticed the software, but people noticed that the software was deleting Mac user files without warning. After customers create, updated Creative Cloud, it accessed their hard drives and deleted the first folder that appeared in alphabetical order. Due to file naming con uh, conventions on Mac computers, the bug often deleted hidden system folders or backup data files. Adobe issued a fix for the issue on Sunday. Many people though in creative industries have reacted angrily on social media. You think? The problem came to light on Thursday after Backblaze, which makes data backup software, started receiving hundreds of support requests from its customers. The firm software detected that some of the files it uses to perform its duties have been deleted and staff discovered that Creative Cloud was responsible after the designer installed Adobe's update. <sighs> Taking a breather here. Clearly this walking and talking thing is a bit of a challenge for me. <sighs> the issue was present in the Creative Cloud version 3.5.0.206 on the Mac. And on Mac, hidden files and folders are prefixed with period which the op operating system places before A in alphabetical order. The flaw interfered with Backblaze's software by chance because the backup software places a hidden folder called .bzvol on the hard drives it indexes. This happened to be top of the list. On machines without the backup software installed, a different folder may have been deleted instead. In a statement, Adobe said, on the 12th of February, we were notified that some customers had an issue with an update on the Creative Cloud desktop application. We removed the update from distribution and deployed a new one, which addresses the issue. 
That's a pretty lousy explanation, let alone apology, Adobe. Pretty lousy indeed. Did you find everybody's files for them? Ah, anyway, the UK government wants to introduce a law which may, in one example, force users to enter credit card info if they want to access pornographic content online. The new restriction will apply to any sites that contain pornographic material and would receive an 18, uh, and would receive an 18 if they were formally rated. The new law is being introduced in order to force users to identify themselves in an attempt to keep children from using pornographic or otherwise inappropriate websites. Companies that run the websites will have to put checks in place to ensure that only adults are viewing them or face having their sites shut down. Those that don't comply could have advertising banned or be forced to have their pages unavailable in the country. It isn't clear exactly how the companies will verify the age of those visiting them, but one way is that it states that, it will, uh, that the sites will force people to sign up with a valid credit card to ensure that they are at least 18, something that already happens on gambling sites. The government said that the new effort was part of its plans to keep children safe online. Internet Safety and Security Minister Baroness Shields, that's an awesome name, says, just as we do offline, we want to make sure children are prevented from accessing pornographic content online, which should only be viewed by adults. The final decision on the new rules will be decided on April 12th. Question is, what do you think? Does this move restrict internet freedom, or is it a viable tactic for protecting our children? We want to know your comments. Post them below. Big thanks this week to OFCL Runny Cat on Twitter, Roy W. Nash, and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us. If you've found a news story that you'd like to send, email it to newsroom at category5.tv. For all your tech news with a slight Linux bias, visit category5.tv slash newsroom, or the category5.tv newsroom at category, uh, newsroom.category5.tv. For the category5.tv newsroom, from the road, walking, not letting my Garmin Vivo fit yell at me, I'm Jeff Weston. Wowzers. That was fun. Way to go, man. <laughs> Welcome Good back. To, yeah, way to go, way to go. Woo. That was pretty, I, we were out of breath just, uh, just following yeah. along with you. That was amazing. Yeah, a little much. A little much for me. <laughs> That's a trooper too, eh? Walking yeah. around in the cold. I don't know how he is doing the paper thing and everything. <laughs> it's impressive, man. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Wasn't that, it wasn't as bad as it has been, so. That's true. It yeah. was minus 40 this weekend. Uh, we couldn't even take the kids sledding. And that yeah. is a pastime here, folks. Uh, and then today was actually quite mild. So yes, Jeff, Jeff lucked out, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, this is Category 5 Technology TV. Welcome back to the show. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Kelsey Jensen. Kelsey, what do you think of these teeny drones? I love them. I, love I think them. they're so cute. They're so adorable. <laughs> I would love to send you one of these. Or, t whoa, two of these. Okay. I didn't think I was synced yet. <laughs> for the record. For the record. You can drive them. <laughs> when you want to sync, what do you do? You go up. Full throttle, down. Now you are synced. Now you only touch the throttle a little bit. That's your lesson for today, because now I'm synced. Ah? Uh, I didn't know that I, <laughs> I was already synced. That was amazing. These things are a blast anyways, and you see that even if you smash them into the roof, they're pretty versatile. They're not going to yeah. disintegrate on you, and you're still going to be able to pick them up and keep flying. That's what's beautiful about learning on a teeny drone. We've got two of these to give away, and all you have to do is support us by sending us 25 cents. That's it. 25 yes. cents per episode of Category 5 Technology TV, and we're going to put you in a, a, your, your ballot in to win two of yes. these teeny drones. Um, also, I mean, that's just, that's fun, and that's awesome, and I'd love for you to win that, uh, but really what it boils down to is you're supporting a free service. Yes. Category 5 Technology TV is free. Yes. The Category 5.TV network is absolutely free. 100%. So everything that we offer, uh, if you head on over to mindtest.tv, we have a gaming server. You can download the game for free. You can install it on your Windows, Mac, or Linux computer, and then you can connect to our servers, and you yeah. can play with other viewers. That's free. Our websites are free. Our shows are free. Our podcasts are free. Everything um, is free. We give it for downloads. We're going to give you a tutorial tonight, and you can download the files. Um, everything's 
things available for you for free uh, that we can possibly offer for free. That's what we're about. We're also volunteers. Yes. We don't get paid to be here and we dedicate a lot of time uh, to putting this on for you and pulling everything together. And we love it. Don't get me wrong. It's a blast. Yes. And we love being... Um, so much fun. We I love, love being a part of this community, I think. I love coming here. It's great fun. And so that said, we have bills to pay. Yes. And when the problem that we run into when we're, you know, here, have the broadcast for free, have whatever we can provide you for free, is the landlord doesn't say the same thing to us. No the internet company doesn't say the same thing to us and all the other companies that we do have bills to pay to insurance is another one and uh and so really what it boils down to is your contributions help us to make the show strong so yeah. that we can keep offering it for free and that's always going to be our intention uh because that's what this is all about yes. So please support us. If you have the means to do so, all we ask is 25 cents per episode. If you can do more, of course, you're going to fast track us to being able to pay our bills every single month on time without having to come out of any of our pockets. Uh, and that, that would be awesome. Yes. That would be fair and, and amazing. Yes. And so that's why I want to send you two teeny drones, because I want to thank you for supporting Category 5 TV. So how do you do that? You go over to patreon.com slash category five, read up on us, find out a little bit about some of the other shows that we're doing. Uh, we have now four weekly shows. So That's there's cool. category five technology TV, and then we have three other weekly shows. And we have other shows that are a little less frequent because we're still developing the brands yep. like the drone zone, um, the uh, show show. try it, buy it, the show show, things that we're trying to build up, but we just need the resources behind us to be able to do yeah. that. Um, and so, um, but we're doing our best to offer you as much family safe, family friendly programming as we possibly can. Thank you for supporting us through Patreon. Yes, Thanks for great. subscribing on PayPal, too. If you don't want to yeah. use Patreon, PayPal's another way. You can go to donate.category5.tv. And again, if you don't want to even do that, and you just want to support us by buying stuff that you're going to buy anyways, you can buy toilet paper on Amazon. <laughs> Do it through our affiliate links. That's it. Just go through our partner links and then you're supporting the show. Yeah. It's like 4 to 6% commission that goes into our pockets and helps us to pay the bills. Ooh. So that's pretty substantial when you think about it. And yeah. Amazon has great prices as it is. Um, so it really helps us out that way Absolutely. as well. And you can p compile these things together. Say $0.25 cents an episode. Great. But we, they have a need right now. So let's throw another $20 in through PayPal. And let's buy our toilet paper on Amazon. <laughs> Multivitamins or whatever else. How does a ladybug live in the middle of the, <laughs> the February in Barrie, Ontario, Canada? That's, that, where'd it's, it go? Anyway, that's my spiel. Ladybug was here to tell me to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to get into the GIMP? Yeah, let's do it. GNU Image Manipulation Wait, Program. Woo! It's free too. Yay, I love free things. Have we ever mentioned that we love free things here? My the thing. GNU Image Manipulation Program is like a Photoshop alternative. Yes. So take Photoshop, knock a thousand dollars off the price, and there you go. Change the interface a little bit yeah. and make it supported by a community rather than a company. Yes. And that's what the GIMP is to me. Get it at GIMP.org. It too is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. We've got it on Linux. You can install it from your repositories. If you are brave, you can install it right from their sources, and then you're going to get the bleeding edge version. Nice thing about the bleeding edge version is what we're about to do tonight is a lossy process and as you get into the more uh, current versions of the GIMP they have been improving those lossy processes yeah. scaling images for example in GIMP if you scale down there is the interpolation isn't perfect in some of the older versions and so they've been improving that rotating images it's not perfect in that you might need to pay close attention to which interpolation you're using and right. that's all going to make sense to you in a couple of minutes time. What are we looking at tonight? Do you want to tackle my list of here's what we are going to do through this exercise, what we're going to learn we're doing in the GIMP. We're doing duplicating layers so we need to make We're learning them. layers, this is good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are rotating images by arbitrary amounts so it's not like 35, 25. We're not 25. talking 90 degree angles yeah. here. We're talking, let's take an image that was taken a little crooked by a one legged pirate and fix it. We're going to figure out what interpolation means, which is good, That's and good. also cropping. 
interpolation is a serious thing. So when it comes up and it says, which interpolation do you want to use? <laughs> Cropping as well? Yeah. How to crop your images. Cropping the image. Nice. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's get right Ooh. into it. This is the GNU Image Manipulation Program and a lovely picture of my co-host and assistant tonight in our front lobby. This is our lobby, folks. Welcome. It's so pretty. And uh, we have this wonderful, uh, what do you call it? It's like, wow, we have lines on our walls. It's what? perfect. We have a point of reference. For straightness. <laughs> now, typically, when you take a photo, you can use corners and things like that. Yeah. But you need to focus on corners and edges that are dead center in the image. Or it could be something hanging. Yeah. If something is hanging straight up and down, uh, what, what would be an example? Like if there's like a, like a, a plant would be a good example, uh, I think. Yeah, a, uh, like a ceiling light. A ceiling light, as long as it has the ability to, f to swoop like that. Yep. Those are good examples of things that if they're in the center of your image, you can use them to understand what st straight is. Yeah. Because if it's a, a bit of an angle and it's a ceiling light and gravity is always straight up and down, 90 degrees, we'll say, without getting scientific, um, then we can say that that is straight yeah. up and down. So if we align to that lamp, that's a good example. Yeah, for sure. We have these lines on our walls. Which is kind of handy. So the one uh, one legged pirate took this picture tonight, uh, just for the sake of this demonstration. One of the uh, the things about this is that okay, you can post that online, and, and you probably see this a lot, but it's uh, it's not really that professional if this is what you're going to put up. So we're going to use the rotation tool. I mentioned we're going to learn about duplicating layers, and so we want to um, work on a duplicate of our layer. Yep. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. I'm going to show you two. Um, so there are more than two, I'm sure. But uh, So this way is kind of a manual way. So let's get started. We're going to duplicate a layer so that we now have two copies of this image. Okay. And with the top copy, what I want to do is I want to rotate it uh, in such a way that it's going to be straight. So first of all, let's see if I can turn on a, a grid or something along those lines. Let's go view. And do we have a show grid? Yep. Middle section. There it is. Show grid. It didn't do much of a grid for me, did it? Huh. That's all right. Grid. I asked for it. Well, I must have a setting turned. Oh, there we go. No, that's the rotate grid. Okay. So this gets a little bit, um, if that's something that's happening to you, there's a little trick, and I know it's kind of cheating, but here's a straight edge. And I can place that anywhere over top of my image, and now I've got a straight edge that I can work with. And I know that that's a little bit of a, a hack, but look at that. So I've got those lines behind you, Kelsey, yeah. and I can see that, okay, now I've got that one is straight. Now this one is not because, see that one Yeah. on the left there? So I'm actually working behind this, and like I say, that's a bit of a hack. But I wanted to show you this so that we had a couple of different ways to do this. But essentially what you want to do is just eyeball it and say, okay, well, that's probably a little closer to straight. So let's rotate this image and see what, what comes of it. And this is a pretty high res image. Uh, so it's, what have we got here? 40, almost 5,000 by 3,200. So now you see that that image looks straight and, uh, and, and works good. So I can actually use your perfect posture here, Kelsey, to, uh, to tell me whether or not this image is straight. That's pretty handy. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first version of this tutorial. So now I've selected the, um, and to rotate, of course, I chose the rotate tool, which is right there. Now I'm going to uh, click on the rectangle select tool, and I'm going to, uh, click single click anywhere uh, on my image or outside of the image but on the canvas and I hit control A to select all and then if I single click on the selection now I've got the ability to bring it in so what I want to do is I want to tighten it up so that that see that uh, grid in the background yeah. so that it's gone and notice that I have turned off that bottom layer okay that's important otherwise I'm not going to see the grid yeah so over here same thing I want to drag in to there See? Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, same thing. Drag so that I'm inside the grid. And over on the right-hand side, same exact thing. And then I can right-click and go Image, 
crop to selection. And now my image is going to be cropped a square. Well, not a square, but you know what I mean. It's going to be cropped so that there is no strange angles on the outside edge uh, as there would be if I left it like that. Okay. To really show that off, what I'll do is I'll color in this bottom layer white, and then you'll really see what's actually happening there. There we go. See the angles that are happening? Yeah. Okay. So that's the first way that you can do it, but that's a little bit, a little bit over the top amount of work. We like to do yeah. things nice and quick here. Nice and easy. Might as well learn an easier way to do it. Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to revert back to everything. I could, I'm just hitting Control Z. I could go File, uh, do I have, yeah, Revert. There we go. Do I want to revert? Yes. There we go. So there's my original. So now I'm going to single click on the Rotate tool here. And now let's go through our tool options. We're going to look at both of these direction options. So we've got normal and corrective. Interpolation, we talked a little bit about that. What that is, so interpolation, to kind of summarize it, is it's a mathematical calculation that says, OK, if you've rotated a line like this, I need to calculate the, kind of the, the edging of that line. Right. So if you're using the wrong interpolation for your image, it will look jagged. Yeah. I can really show that if I were to turn it to none. And then let's do a, a rotation here. And once that's done rotating, we should be able to tell. Oh, there's my grid. I'm, it's such a high resolution image. <laughs> Isn't that nutty? Grid's tiny. I'm going to turn that off now. Uh, show grid. There we go. <laughs> so because it's such a high resolution, but you see yeah. how jagged that edge really is? Yeah. It's kind of, oh, I'm sorry, folks. There we go. How much, how much did you miss? Uh, I've got a jagged edge there by choosing um, interpolation none. What does the chat room say? How far did I go without having the screen up? OK, so let's try interpolation cubic. And with that, we can now change our rotation of this image like that. And it's going to use a, a much more sophisticated interpolation to calculate edges so that they look nice and clean anti-aliased, they're not jagged, um, and they look kind of nice. So now if I get in on that, you'll see that edge is much smoother. Yeah. Okay. Even if I get in nice and close, it's got a nice smoothness to it. So cubic is usually the default, and it works fairly well. However, um, this ver version here, Sync Lanxos 3 can also provide excellent results, depending on the version that you have. Yeah. So let's take a look at your, see what I'm doing there? I'm using the edge of this window to just line up to your perfect yep. posture. There we go. So rotate. Takes a little longer. Yep. Because that's a, a little more sophisticated of an algorithm yeah. to, uh, to calculate. But try each of those so that you can get a sense for what is going to work the right. best for your image. And, uh, and then you're going to get a better result. It's different for each image. That's why I want you to see. So let's get in here. What the sync version does is it, now you can see that is crystal clear as yeah. far as this edging goes. Um, it kind of adds a little bit of a fuzziness to make up, compensate for um, some of that, uh, the change of the angle and, and that interpolation. So, right. OK, so let's go back to the way that it was. And I mentioned that you know having to crop it manually and everything, it's, it's a little bit too much work for what we want to do. So the tool, in fact, will allow you to automatically clip your image, or AKA crop. Sorry, when I clicked it, it jumped up because of my zoom. But you'll see, under clipping, I've got the option to adjust, clip, crop to result, or crop with aspect. Of course, crop with aspect is going to maintain the aspect ratio of the original image. We don't necessarily need that. But crop to result, what that's going to do is it's going to ensure that if it st staggers in the canvas, right. now it's going to crop it automatically. Okay. So that kind of so it just, tedious task that yeah. we did manually. Does not, doesn't work. Or does it, does it do it's it? It's unnecessary. Quick. Yeah. Right? I'll, I'll show you. And once you see it on screen, it'll really make sense. So now that I've selected that, so clip, uh, crop to result, 
and look at the other options that are here. I guess everything else is pretty well default. Uh, now, watch what happens as I rotate your image to straighten it up. Rotate. Okay, and we're still using sync as our interpolation. Still going to be a little slow, but it looks a little faster. It's a little slow, yeah. But it gets the job done. And remember, we're working with a hugely high resolution image, yes. too. So if you're using smaller images, it's probably not going to lock up like that. Yeah. But it's there we go. So now you see it's actually created a square image. Well, not a, I keep saying square. A squared edge image. They are 90 degree corners. So, uh, so now we can crop to that nice and simply. So what do we do? Now we go right click, layer, layer to image size. So now we've basically said, okay, now we forget about what you think the layer is. We've created it at the image size. So it's right to the edge. Now I can right click and go image auto crop image and watch what happens to that edge. It disappears. Ooh. So now our image in a couple of quick steps is perfectly aligned, perfectly cropped and uh, ready to be uploaded or whatever. Oh. A couple of final touches that you might do is not lock your screen. That was the, that was the <laughs> screen lock button. I actually pushed the button that I set to screen lock. <laughs> Which was meant to, you know what I was going to do? Levels. Levels are a cool thing. All right, let's try that again. Levels. Because you see in our front, uh, in our front foyer, we, what does this tell us in the spectrum? There's not a lot of light. Nothing. It's pretty dark. We're actually using the flash to our advantage there. So let's brighten it up. Let's make it feel more like daytime. So we can adjust our levels as kind of the final touch. Uh, in our image. If you want, you don't have to do this. Yeah, you don't have to. Um, but it's fun. And we lose a little bit, and we'll, we'll get a little deeper into the levels tool um, as the series goes on. But tonight's was primarily about uh, about being able to align those images and then crop them so that they're going to print nicely. Yes. So they're going to scale nicely and, and work well on, say, you want to post that to Facebook? Yeah. You don't want it to look like, oh, yeah. it's been turned. And sometimes I get pictures that are really yeah. askew. And it's tough to take photos in a room where it's a small, tight space yeah. and you're taking it on an angle and you're trying to get in there. And so it ends up being, you know, lines this way and that way. Right. And then you get it into your computer and you realize, oh, that's really crooked. Mm -hmm. Now you can fix it using free software. That's the GIMP GNU Image Manipulation Program. And it's available at GIMP.org. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Thanks so much for being here tonight. Thanks. Kelsey? It's always a pleasure to have you here. Always a pleasure to, pleasure to be here. Time flies, man. I know. How does that happen? It's just ridiculous. Did you have fun? I had fun. Post your comments below. Say hi. Give us a thumbs up. Visit all our website, category5.tv. Yeah, all the fun things. Do Everything. all the fun things. Everything. This is Category 5. You've got to do the fun things, folks. Heck yeah. That's the plan. Yep. I'll see you on MindTest, I'm sure. <laughs> MindTest.tv. Yeah. Check it out. Rev D. Jenks says that's the quickest hour on TV. Tuesday well, nights, folks. TV. Well, it's TV now. Yeah. It's on Roku. Do you have cable? Comment below. <laughs> I don't have cable. What did you ask me? Did I see the Grammys? Yeah. And I said no. You said why? I jokingly said because I wanted to watch paint dry. The truth is, I don't. <laughs> I don't have cable, and I don't. True. I don't care enough to get it. Uh, can you watch it else? Else way? I would assume so. It was so. cable TV. Your dad works for the cable TV company. Yeah. So I better shut up right now. <laughs> I sure love me my Roku, folks. I love me my <laughs> Roku. And Plex. And Netflix. Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. And Netflix. Take it easy, everybody. Have a fantastic week. And we will see you again next yeah. Tuesday night. Good night. Bye. We hope you enjoyed the show. Category 5 TV broadcasts live from Barrie, Ontario, Canada every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. If you're watching this on demand or through cable TV, check out the local showtimes in your area at Category5.tv and find out when you can watch live and interact in the community chat room. Category 5 is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in.